Next to this guy, the Walking Dead themselves don't seem so bad. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we will explore the comic book origins of Negan. This in our pants yet? For this origin, we've chosen to primarily follow the storyline which unfolded in 2012's Walking Dead number 100 and 2016's Image Plus numbers 1 to 5. Hi. You're Rick, right? I'm Negan. Some of the information presented in this video may reveal some plot points which viewers of the TV series may not know just yet. So big ol' spoiler alert. Sucks, don't it? The titular zombies of The Walking Dead are the most readily identifiable menace in the comics, but they're far from the only danger to the humans battling for their lives. For instance, the gang leader known as Negan is much worse than any walker. Nope, he doesn't eat human flesh. But this tyrannical shakedown artist can be far more ruthless and calculating in who he chooses to kill than any roamer. Although he's definitely a major antagonist, Negan belongs to a long line of villains who are as fascinating and intriguing as the heroes they bedevil. While this badass didn't appear until issue 100, his reputation preceded him in a big way. Rick and his group, known as the Atlanta Survivors, kept hearing rumors about someone named Negan as they negotiated living arrangements with Hilltop Colony, a large and friendly neighboring group. Although no one seemed to actually have seen Negan, his name struck fear into people's hearts and minds. And for good reason. You thought you were safe. I get it. But the word is out. You are not safe. Negan and his followers, the Saviors, were a bunch of protection racketeers. In exchange for keeping the dead away, they would confiscate half of the group's food and supplies, and anyone that didn't want to go along with the plan ended up feeling Negan's wrath. When Negan finally appeared, it was after Rick had told the Hilltop Colony that his group would take care of Negan in exchange for becoming part of the colony. Rick's followers killed some of Negan's lackeys, and Negan didn't take kindly to that. You killed my people, a whole damn lot of them, more than I'm comfortable with. And for that, for that you're gonna pay. He captured Rick and his friends and told them that things were different now. From this day forward, they were under his control and would give him half of everything, or they would be killed. To show them that he meant business, he lined them all up and told them that because they had killed some of his men, he was going to have to randomly murder one of them. Negan went through the reasons for why or why he shouldn't kill each one. Then he randomly picked Glenn. Taking Lucille, his baseball bat which was covered in barbed wire and his favorite weapon, he brutally beat Glenn to death. You can breathe. You can blink. You can cry. Hell, you're all going to be doing that. Rick naturally swore vengeance, but Negan nonchalantly told him that there was no chance in hell of accomplishing that. Negan left Rick to contemplate the new order of things, giving him one week to return with the dues he and his friends were owed, or else face destruction. Give me your shit, or I will kill you. Although Negan continued as a major character in the comics, only a few facts about his past were parceled out along the way. In 2016, a backup series was begun, which added a few details about how he came to be. So far, readers have learned that before the zombie outbreak, Negan was a coach, presumably of high school students. Although he wasn't a ruthless killer back then, he was still arrogant and egotistical, happy to destroy weak students with well-chosen words. Negan's wife had confronted him about this, but suddenly she collapsed in the middle of their argument. After getting to her in the hospital, he learned that his wife had cancer, and apparently the prognosis was not good. Sometime later, readers saw Negan in bed with another woman, who turned out to be his mistress. Hearing of the cancer, the mistress ended the affair, which Negan's wife had been aware of. Negan's relationship with his wife was apparently complicated, but there was a deep connection between them, and as her condition worsened, readers saw just how much Negan truly loved her. To make things worse, as the wife lay dying in the hospital, the zombie virus hit. So Negan watched his wife die, then saw her return as part of The Walking Dead. Whether he killed her or not is left kind of ambiguous, but it was clear that the experience scarred him. Oh, and his wife's name? Can you guess? It was Lucille, the name that Negan would later give to the barbed wire baseball bat he uses to happily bludgeon people to death. Anyone up for some perverse symbolism? This is Lucille, and she is awesome. Negan is one of Robert Kirkman's finest creations in The Walking Dead. Decidedly evil and with a psychotic bent, he also has a code he lives by and at times can be quite engaging. And while his methods are reprehensible, he has indeed saved many people from the zombies, though at a very steep cost. I don't want to kill you people. Just want to make that clear from the get-go. I want you to work for me. You can't do that if you're dead now, can you? Are you a fan of Negan and his brand of post-apocalyptic justice? For more awesome comic book origins, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com. 
taking it like a champ.